guys, happy July. I hope you all had an awesome June. I read four books total last month, so I am going to just jump right in and get started with my June wrap-up video. The first book I read last month was one that I've been seeing around forever and I've been meaning to read it and I finally picked it up and decided we're gonna do this. It is Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. This is the first book in the Grisha trilogy and it's kind of this Russian-inspired um, mix of like fantasy and steampunk and all sorts of good things. Shadow and Bone is set in this fictional country called Ravka, which has this great big thing running through the middle of it. It's called the Shadow Fold and it's this huge expanse of land that covers like the whole side of the country and it separates Ravka from the sea and it's like this great big darkness and it's filled with monsters. Some of the people in Ravka have special magic powers like they can summon things and they can create different things. They are called the Grisha and they have special political powers. And the leader of them is called the Darkling and he's been trying to destroy this shadow fold for a long time because it's, you know, it's closing their country in, they can't go anywhere, they're stuck. So he's been trying to destroy this. The main character of Shadow and Bone is an orphan named Alina who works for one of the armies with her best friend Mal. One day their army has to cross the Shadow Fold and while they're out there, they're attacked by monsters and Alina somehow summons this light from within herself and she saves everybody on the ship and they're able to make it back to camp. Immediately she's taken to the Darkling's camp and he tells her that she's this rare kind of Grisha called a Sun Summoner and he wants her to help him try and destroy the Shadow Fold. So Shadow and Bone is about Alina and how she has to deal with being so far away from her best friend Mal and how she has to learn to control this power and how she tries to figure out who is trustworthy and who's not. I absolutely loved everything about this book way more than I thought I was going to going into it. It's just so unique and so creative and the world building is fantastic and I love the characters. Everything is very well fleshed out and I just really enjoyed this one. So I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson. This one I would kind of describe as a prequel of sorts to Peter Pan. I thought it was a really interesting take on the story because it takes the Peter Pan story that at least I thought I knew and um, it's set before that. This story is about a girl named Tiger Lily who is part of the native tribes living in Neverland and she is engaged to be married to one of the boys in her tribe and she just doesn't want to have anything to do with that and one day she's out in the woods and she meets Peter Pan and after a while they start kind of being friends and it develops into a romantic relationship. What's really cool about this story though is that while it's about Tiger Lily, it's narrated by Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell is a fairy and she can't talk, she's mute. So she can observe everything that's going on, but she can't tell anybody except for us, the audience. So throughout the whole book, we as the audience can see everything that's happening around the island and we can start piecing together um, this story as it goes along. Her writing is so pretty and it's very poetic and it just adds this very bittersweet feeling throughout the whole book. I really really enjoyed this one and I gave it four and a half out of five stars. The next book I read is 172 Hours on the Moon by Johann Harstad. This book is set in the year 2019 and NASA has not been doing well for the past few years and they are trying to get more funds to um, help continue their space exploration programs. So they come up with this idea to have a contest for teenagers to send three teenagers from around the world on a space trip to the moon for a week. So they can be part of this kind of historic space exploration and they can get the media involved and they can get more funds back into their programs. So everything goes great at first and um, three teens are picked. There's one from Norway and there's one from Japan and there's one from France and they get along pretty well. and. They go through their training in um, Houston and everything is just going great and they say goodbye to their families and they go up into space and then they land on the moon and things start going bad. Basically this book isn't just your regular sci-fi book about a space trip to the moon. It is just a pure horror story set on the moon. I give this one 4 out of 5 stars. If you like 
space travel or if you don't like space travel and you need a reason to not ever travel in space, you should read this book. It's frightening. The last book I read is actually one that I've read before and I'm sure most of you watching this have read this or at least heard of it, I would hope so. It is Divergent by Veronica Roth. I figured with Allegiant, the last book in the series coming out in October, and there's a movie coming out next year, and I have seen Divergent just plastered all over the place, so I decided it was time for a good reread. If you don't know about Divergent, it is a dystopian set in a futuristic Chicago, and around the age of 16, all the people have to choose which of five factions they want to belong to. It's just such a good book, and if you haven't read it, you need to go out and get this one, because you're gonna hear all about it if you haven't already. You're just gonna be hit with this, like, hard wall of Divergent. Anyway, I really enjoyed this one reading this one again. I give this one 5 out of 5 stars. That is what I read for the month of June. If you read anything really interesting last month, you should leave it in a comment down below. And other than that, I will see you guys next time.